Hey guys, so this video is an explanation of the calculations for the spectroscopy lab. Hopefully it'll get you started down the right path. So um, one of the first things you're going to need to do is calculate the concentration of both the cobalt 2 ion and copper 2 ion in your stock solution. Um, so starting with the definition of molarity, which is what we're calculating, it's moles per liter. So for cobalt 2, just be the moles of cobalt 2 per liters of solution. Now because the stock solution was made up in a 50.00 milliliter um, volumetric flask. The liters of solution is 0 0.05000 liters, four sig figs in that number. And the moles of cobalt is equal to the moles of cobalt 2 nitrate hexahydrate that was weighed out. Um, because in one mole of cobalt 2 nitrate hexahydrate, there is one mole of cobalt 2 ion. And when you put this stuff in water, it just dissociates into the cobalt ion, the nitrate ion, and the waters just kind of go away. So to get the moles of the cobalt to nitrate hexahydrate, we just take the mass that was weighed out, um, in, so it'll be in grams, and divide by the molar mass of the cobalt to nitrate hexahydrate. Um, when you calculate this molar mass down here, be really careful that you do include the six waters. That's a common mistake not to do that. Um, once you get the, the moles of the cobalt to nitrate hexahydrate, um, it's equal to the moles of cobalt to ion, put it up here, divide by 0 0.0500 liters, and you have the concentration of your stock cobalt 2 solution. Same exact thing for the copper 2 um, um, concentration. Moles of copper 2 divided by liters of solution. It's in the same flask, so it's the volume of solution is still 0 0.05000 liters, four sig figs. Um, and because the, co co uh, excuse me, the copper 2 ion came from the copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate, and in one mole of copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate, there is one mole of copper 2 ion. And this also dissolves when you put it into water, into the copper 2 ion, the sulfate ion, and the water molecules just kind of go their own way. Um, so moles of cobalt, excuse me, I'm saying cobalt, copper 2 is equal to the moles of the co copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. And to get that, you just take the mass of the copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate that was weighed out, divide by the more mass of copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. Again, be really careful to include the five waters in there. That gives you moles of copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate, which is equal to the moles of copper 2, and that goes up here, divide by 0 0.05000 liters, and you have the concentration of copper 2 ion in your stock solution. The next step is to calculate the concentration of those both of those ions in test tubes 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, test tube 5, you do not have to do a calculation for because you already did it. In test tube 5, there is no water added, so the concentration of each ion is the same as the concentration of the stock solution of that ion for test tube 5. But for test tubes 1 through 4, they were um, the, the ions were diluted, so we use the dilution equation. C1V1 equals C2V2, where we are solving for C2, so it's C1V1 over V2. Now for each of these test tubes, so you're going to do this calculation for the cobalt ion, for test tubes one, two, three, and four, and for the copper two ion for test tubes one, two, three, and four. That's eight calculations like this. Um, in every one of those calculations, C1 is always the concentration of the stock. If you're doing cobalt two, it's the concentration of the st stock cobalt two ion. If you're doing copper two, it's the concentration of the stock copper two ion. We just talked about that in previous slide. slides. Um, now, V1 is going to be the volume of stock solution that was added. And the way that you got your data, you have a final and initial volume for your water and for your stock. So the volume of stock solution that was added, V1, it's going to be, for that test tube, the final volume minus the initial volume of the stock solution. V2, that's the total volume. So that's the volume of the stock solution plus the water that was added. So to get V2 down here, you take, just like we did up here, the final minus initial volume so it'll be the same as is up here for the stock solution and add to that the volume of the water added which is the final volume of the water minus the initial volume of the water added for that test tube and do that for each of the test tubes for each of the um, two ions and that will give you your concentrations of your cobalt two ion in test tubes one two three four five which is the same as stock and copper two ion the same one two three four and five now you're ready for your graph okay. um, you're going to take a spreadsheet, it doesn't matter which one you do, but what you're going to do is you're going to plot absorbance versus the concentration of the ion. So there's going to be two graphs, one for the cobalt 2 ion, one for the copper 2 ion. Um, 
So um, a couple things to watch out for. Make sure that you actually do have absorbance on the y-axis and the concentration of whichever ion you're graphing on the x-axis. The way most spreadsheets work, if you have, you can change this behavior, but usually people don't. You have two columns of data that you're graphing. The left column is the x-axis, and the right column is the y-axis. Um, so make sure you get those um, in the correct columns. It should look something like this, a pretty straight line with um, a positive slope. Um, once you get that, once you plot your five five points, so these five points you'll plot here will be the absorbance that you will measure that that was measured for each of the different test tubes one, two, three, four, and five. Um, the unknown is not in here. You, you know, do not try to graph the unknown. That's a mistake sometimes people make. Um, and then what you have your spreadsheet do is draw the best fit straight line through those points. It should hit, hit pretty closely. The r squared should be really close to one. Um, and then have it give you the equation of that best fit straight line. So I made some numbers up here, guys. Do not use these numbers. You will have your own numbers. Do not use these numbers. But just so you have something concrete to look at, you'll get something that looks like this. It might say f of x equals that same thing. f of x is the same thing as y. Um, once you get that, okay, so your goal in all this is to find the concentration of each of the ions, cobalt 2 and copper 2. The concentration of the unknown is x in this equation. So you solve this for x. Y is the absorbance, so you will have you will have the have have measured the absorbance of your unknown cobalt two ion and copper two ion, two different numbers. So if you're doing the copper two, plug the absorbance of copper two in here, use that graph, solve it for x. So with my numbers, it would look like this. Where for y, I put put in the absorbance of whatever ion I'm dealing with. Um, solve for x, and that's your answer. That's all there is to it, guys.